let's model this soap bottle. All right, we'll do this together. I'm going to provide you with an image that I drew up of a soap bottle here. Okay, and you can download this image and you can follow along with me. And we're going to create something uh, like this. In part one, we'll do the modeling, and in part two, we'll do the materials, and we'll put some kind of a decal. Probably not a dog, probably something that says soap. Okay, so this is a relatively easy uh, video to follow. All right, if you're not that experienced with using Blender, we'll go through it slow and easy. All right, so here I am in Blender 2.79 with my screencast keys on. Um, in case my colors look different from you, I get that question a lot, just in user preferences under themes, I've chosen Science Lab as the theme that I like to use. Okay, I'm going to switch up here over to Cycles Render. And um, under here, under Render, I'm able to activate GPU Compute uh, based on my video card. Uh, whether or not you have that or not doesn't really matter. All right, I'm going to take the camera and the light and I'm going to hit, I'm going to select them both and hit M and I'm going to move them down here to another layer and we're going to hit X and delete that cube. All right, so here we go. Let's do this uh, from three, which is the right side and hit five to go into right orthographic view so you're looking straight on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load up that background image that I'm providing you. So hit N to open the side panel and scroll until you see background images, click the arrow, add image, change the axis from all views to right, and then click open and navigate to where you have saved that image. Okay, soap bottle reference.png and hit end to close it and we're done. Okay, so there it is now. So it looks a little blurry there, but if you zoom in, it gets sharper and sharper as you zoom in and we'll be working relatively close. Now, when that image comes in, the circle that you see here, the red and white circle, is right in the middle of the stage along the Y and the Z or Z axis. And that's fine. We're not going to move it. It's relatively centered, but you know, it could be off ever so slightly if you're really concerned and you want to try to move the background image to be perfectly centered. So when we model, we'll be pretty close to the image. But if you're off a little bit, that's okay. Make it your own soap bottle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start modeling now. And I'm going to base this off of a cylinder and I'm going to model the bottle part here. By the way, these numbers that you see here imply whether or not um, I modeled or we're going to model these pieces together as one piece, as you can see in let's say four, for A, B, C, and D. We're going to do this all as one piece and we're going to use extrusions and scaling and stuff like that. Um, but where you see them as numbered separately, like number one and number two, uh, I didn't number the bottle because it's obvious we're just going to model the bottle. Uh, these are separate pieces, and this gray thing here implies that there's a tube that goes down in through the middle and into the bottle and sort of expands and gets a bit smaller, a bit smaller. And then there's a tube. Whether or not it's a clear tube or, you know, an opaque tube doesn't really matter. Okay, so here we go. Let's start modeling the bottle itself. So I'm going to use a cylinder. So I'm going to press Shift A, the hotkey, to bring up the Add dialog box. I'm going to choose Mesh, Cylinder, and I'm going to leave the default number of vertices. Um, that's fine. And I'm going to come down to Cap Fill, and that determines whether or not the ends are an end gone, or I'm going to choose nothing. And you see they're open and close, open at the bottom and the top. All right. One thing we might want to do is get rid of this grid display. We're not going to need that. So I'm going to hit N and I'm going to come down to where it says display and I'm going to uncheck grid floor. Hit N to close that. All right, let's hit three and look again. And by the way, if you're if you hit three and you're not, you can't see the image, uh, you may have to hit five after or see this says right perspective view. Make sure you hit five so you can see see the thing. All right, so there is our cylinder. It's obviously a lot smaller than the bottle, so we're going to scale this. Now, I'm going to do this in edit mode, so we're, you can either switch to edit mode down here, 
all right or you can hit tab and you will probably hit tab and go right into edit mode i've got this pie menu here same thing you hit tab choose edit hit tab choose object or just tab in and out of edit all right now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to hit z and go into wireframe or you can do it down here wireframe okay all right well i think i am going to just hit s to scale this s and it's going to scale in all dimensions i can see through it and i'm going to scale it until it hits the sides just like that and again don't panic about getting it perfect okay now that we've done that <clears throat> We need to move this stuff down to the bottom. So it's actually a circle there, all right, a ring. And you can do this in a few ways. If you're in wireframe, you can hit B to border select or box select and then drag a box. I'm pressing the left mouse button down. I can pull that out and release and I'll select all of the bottom points or vertices. Hit three again and I can now pull it down. A to deselect, I could also shift alt and click the line and it will get the whole thing um, just if I just hit uh, press one of them I'm only gonna get that all right so I'm gonna deselect go back to three and I'm gonna just do it this way all right let's pull this down until we reach the bottom don't worry about these curves all right just bring this down to the bottom okay A to deselect now <clears throat> There is this curve here that is quite uh, significant. And so what we're going to do is we're going to box select all of these and we're going to pull it down to sort of about the shoulders of that bottle there, right? Just before it curves. And then we're going to create the next part. So we're going to extrude upwards. So I'm going to hit E to extrude and left click to accept. And I'm going to pull up to the neck region right there. Then I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale in until my vertices, the outer yellow dots you see here, are about the width of that neck. Now this is a straight line, it doesn't look very curved, so I'm going to go Control R and put an edge loop in there, and it's going to show up as sort of pink, similar to the background color there, and I'm going to click. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, now I can move it, but I don't care where it lands. I'm just going to click again to release, and then I'm going to hit S to scale. I'm going to scale out and try to sort of mimic the curve. Now, I'd like another one in here so that it's a bit more rounded, so I'm just gonna put my mouse in between this line and this line, Control R, click, click again, S to scale, and pull it out. Now, we'll be adding a subdivision surface to this, a modifier over here under the wrench icon soon, and that will help to smooth it. Um, I think I may go for one more in here, and just do something like that. Okay, so that's good so far. However, one more thing. I'm gonna to switch to edge selection and that way it gets rid of the dots and I just see these lines which are called edges. I'm just holding shift and alt and clicking them to select them to show them to you. This one is a little abrupt coming from a vertical and then all of a sudden switching over. So I'm gonna bevel this line. I'll show you what I mean. I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I selected the whole thing by shift, alt, and click. And then I'm gonna go control B and I'm gonna pull. And that will kind of smooth it out a little bit. I can roll my mouse up if I want. And as I do that, you see the way it gets even more curved? I'm just gonna do that and roll my mouse up just one. That's good enough. Okay, we'll, we'll see how that, how that all works out. Um, let's go ahead and do the neck of the bottle. Now, the, the neck of the bottle would go into the number one, okay, part one, uh, the sort of the part of the cap. Um, so we're going to take this, let's go into solid mode and I'll just show you what we have so far. This um, edge that goes all the way around this circle, I'm gonna need to bring it up to make the neck of the bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select it and the way to select it is Shift and Alt, hold Shift and Alt and click on somewhere on the line. I can click over here, I can click over here. As long as I do Shift and Alt, I get the whole thing. So let's look in three again. I don't have to be in wireframe mode to do this. Um, I'm just gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna pull it up like that. And I'm going to pull it into the cap like that. All right. All right. Good enough for now. 
All right, let's come to the bottom of the bottle and you'll see that it's open. So the soap is gonna pour out. Let's shift alt and click on that. And we're gonna close this. Let's look at number three. All right, I'll go into wireframe just so you can see. All right, I've selected this edge and we're gonna close this up and then we'll deal with the curves. So I'm gonna turn a little bit. I'm holding the mouse button down so I can sort of rotate around. I'll go back into solid view, it's a little easier to see. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna hit E to extrude and then S to scale. I'm gonna pull in to pull in maybe about that much. Normally I'd only pull in a little bit because I'm gonna add a subdivision surface. And if you know anything about doing that, you're, we're gonna want edge loops close, but I'm gonna pull it in because I might wanna bevel this. We'll see. I'm going to do that again, E and S, and I'm going to come in quite a bit further, and then I'm going to close the hole up by going E and accept, and then Alt-M, merge at center. And that's it. That's going to be it. So the bottom is now closed. It's not looking very rounded. It's very sharp, and we have basically our bottle. So let's go back into object mode. All right, and this is what we have so far, and let's click on the wrench, choose Add Modifier, subdivision surface and let's change the view to two. Let's also click on smoothing. All right, and this is what we have. Now, you're gonna notice down here, if you have a keen eye, that the, these lines don't look very straight. It looks kind of distorted, kind of coming in on an angle. That's because we need some more support because when you put on the subdivision surface, it sort of pulls things and rounds things that were straight. And so I'm gonna go into edit mode again, and you can see down here, there is a rounding, but it's too extreme. And so what we need to do is hover your mouse over the bottle somewhere and go Control R. It will put in an edge loop, click, and you can now pull it. And I wanna pull it down near the bottom, not right at the bottom. All right, I want to do that and let's have a look at what that's done. Let's go back into object mode. And you can see it's a, it's fixed that quite a bit, but there's still a bit of discoloration here. It's still being stretched. I think I want to consider beveling this bottom edge. In other words, shift alt and click that lower edge. And I'll show you what I do. I'm gonna go control B and I'm gonna pull. Right away, the color changed a bit. I'm gonna roll my mouse up just once for now. I'm gonna click to accept deselect and let's have a look at that let's put I'm going to deselect as well let's put a nice sort of straight but rounded edge on the bottom which would be nice for us you know our soap bottle so that's what we have so far now um, this is going to be either glass or plastic and when we go to apply materials it's not going to work that well if it's actually as thin as this. This is like paper thin, one polygon thick. I mean, it looks like we got a lot of stuff going on here, um, but it's this thin, all right? Later on, we're going to need to thicken this. But for the moment, I want to add one more edge loop because you might be looking at this and going, what the hell happened? It looks like you spilled some glue there. That's because when I turn the subdivision surface off for the moment, Right here, it comes up and it goes straight right up. Um, the subdivision surface is trying to sort of smooth it out. And so you get this region where it's coming and then it smooths it and it brings it up. It doesn't look very good yet. We need to add one more edge loop, at least one. So hover your mouse over here and go Control R. And already you saw change, pull it down and look at how that white changes. If I push it all the way to the bottom, it disappears, but that's a bit too sharp. Try it around there and let's look. All right, see the, see the way that it comes in and it's relatively smooth. Some people might want it even sharper than that, but I think that's probably good enough right there. Okay, so that's the bottle part. Don't forget to save. All right, let's go back to three and look at what we've done. All right, okay, we've created the bottle and now we're gonna create the, the the cap. Now, there are a few parts to this. There's this piece that will go over the, the neck of the bottle 
and then there's this piece and there's going to be a little hole in in number one so that this piece can fit into it so we're gonna we're gonna deal with that so we're gonna create this out of another cylinder the 3d cursor is here and it determines where my 3d objects are created so watch this I'm gonna create another cylinder shift a mesh cylinder and you can't see it right now because it's in the middle of the bottle. Um, but one thing I want to notice before I, I do anything is we're going to keep the same values as we had before. All right, um, 32 cap fill type nothing. All right, if you don't do anything different, Blender will remember the last settings. I'm going to select the bottle and hit H to hide it. And there is, click on it to select it. There's the new cylinder we brought in. Remember that it was small like that? We're going to just go ahead and grab this and move it up to about the middle of that. We can leave the rest of the bottle hidden for now. Let's zoom in and let's go into edit mode and into wireframe. And let's just hit S to scale. Now, we can scale it out like that until it uh, hits both sides. And then we can shift alt and click that edge and pull it down. To there we're not going to worry about the rounding all right the subdivision surface will probably take care of that for us and pull this up to about there all right so we have a cylinder let's go back into solid view there's the cylinder part there and if we go back into object mode and hit alt h bring back the bottle we can see there is where our our top is going to be of course it doesn't look nice and smooth yet but we're going to deal with that um, let's go back into three Let's select this cap and go into edit mode and then shift alt and click that edge so it goes all the way around. Now, we're going to bring this in as if we're closing it off but just to this point. So we'll end up making a hole that this piece could fit in. So watch what I'm talking about. Now, if I, we try to look from the side, we'll lose the background image. So let's stay in right ortho view, but let's switch over to vertex selection here. Or I can go control tab and that'll bring up the mesh select mode, which is essentially the same as clicking there. See the vertices? Or I can go like that, edge vertices. The reason I'm doing this is because we're going to extrude and scale in and then these outer yellow dots will will be able to see them line up with this line and this line. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to hit E to extrude and accept. That for me accepting is the left mouse button. And now S and pull in. See the yellow to about there. And now we have created a bit of a hole for our other piece to, to go through. We may have to make that a little bit bigger so that the other piece actually fits in it. In fact, I probably will do that. Let's shift alt and click that edge, go back to three, and let's just go S and bring it out a little bit past these lines so it looks like the other one will fit in it. Now I'm gonna do that and let's um, do something down here. Um, to save polygons, which is not something I do all the time, I'm not all that concerned, let's partially close this off. All right, this is going to be a solid object. We're not going to see through it or under it. Let's shift alt and click this edge. Make sure nothing else is selected up there. And we can do it from this view. We want to see the neck underneath. And let's go E to extrude, S, and let's pull it in like that till it sort of touches there or even embeds. All right, so it looks like it's a cap and it goes on. We're not gonna render from this point uh, or anything. So we've got that and we've got that. Now, I also think that what we should do is shift alt and click that edge and let's E to extrude and let's pull it down just a little bit like that. And let's leave it like that for now because our next piece will fit in there and I don't think we're gonna see inside there. Let's add a subdivision surface of two, just like that and smooth and you'll see it's lost all its shape. All right, so we need to put some edge loops in for support, like little bones almost. So let's go into edit mode and where to put them. Usually we put them near the top and near the bottom. So let's go control R, drag an edge loop up near the top, not right on top of the other edge. You don't have to bring it right to the very top and, we, and we're gonna do more and one near the bottom. Let's see how that has affected things. 
Okay, it's a lot nicer, all right, but there's a little bit more work we can do. Let's make this a little bit more sharp. And the way I'm gonna suggest we do that is deselect everything else, and let's put an edge loop here. Control R and pull it out to there, not all the way. Maybe even an equal distance from this middle line to this line, from the middle line to the new line, or, or close. Let's look at that. It sharpens that edge, but it's not super sharp. Now it's just a question of what to do about this, and I think we should do a little bit more work here. So let's do another edge loop and bring it in close to the middle. Let's see if that's enough for us. Well, we can stop there uh, for the top and come to the bottom. We have a similar situation down here with this sort of discoloration. I don't know how well you'll be able to pick that up in the video, um, but we could use another edge loop or two. In fact, you can select the, the bottle and H to hide it again, and we can go in here, and I would do a similar thing I did near the top. This is like going to be the middle line. This line is above it, and let's add an edge loop here and slide it over a little bit. And that will help to sharpen that up maybe just as much as we need it. Now, there's nothing to stop you from bringing in another edge loop in behind here just to tighten it up even more. Now we've gotten rid of the discoloration and it's a little tighter. And we, in fact, we might even want another one up near here. All right. Now, I know that this part is, you, you might be saying, well, how do I know when and where to put edge loops? Just follow along doing that, and over time, you'll get to know where to put them to sharpen up your objects as, as sharp as you want them. Alt-H to bring that back. So here's what we have. Okay. Now we're going to do our next part which is this part and it's going to fit in the hole and I may not actually want any of the hole showing I'm not sure <clears throat> now we can bring in another cylinder and start again right down there our pull and pull it up but a good habit to get into is if you're going to build another object right on top of this with a particular uh, circumference like for example you know I want it this wide this circle is pretty close to the size of what I want. So we can go in here, watch this, deselect, select an edge. I, I just switch over to edge selection, like this inner edge, shift alt and click that. Imagine if we had a cylinder with that diameter. Well, we can use this edge to build the cylinder and it's right in the right spot we need it with almost the correct dimensions. Let's do that. Let's copy this and make it a new cylinder. So the way you do that is select the whole edge, go Shift D, click to copy it. <clears throat> and then we need to break it out of this object because right now what I have is this. I've copied that edge. I can leave it there. So you go P and separate it by selection, by what is selected, just enter. Now go back into object mode. And what we have here, just deselect everything, is the cap. That's still right there. And we have this, all right? Now, it is rough. It is the same diameter as this because we just copied the edge from this and we can just move it down. But you'll notice that my transform tool or gizmo is down here rather than here. That's because we created this piece from this and the origin of this cap was right here. But now we have a new object and that's weird. It's like it's not even connected. All we got to do is with this piece selected, come over here to set origin, say set the origin to the geometry, the actual geometry of the object we're using. It was set to the geometry of this one. We want to set it to this one. So now I can just move this up or down. I'm gonna position it wherever I want. I can look from side view and look, I have almost here, I'll just pull it up. The, the right um, diameter for, for this piece. In fact, I might stick with that and just put it there and we'll build this. All right, the other thing I just wanna quickly mention is that when you take a piece of another object and you do Shift D and P to make it into a new object, it inherits whatever modifiers um, it, that the parent had, this one had. This one had a subdivision surface of two and it had smoothing on it. So this one has a subdivision surface of two and smoothing. That may affect your modeling uh, when you're modeling with subdivisions. So I'm just gonna 
I don't know, well, I'm going to get rid of it. All right, so we don't need it. Choose flat. All right, so what to do with this? Let's go into edit mode, select it, and look from the side. And let's push this down so it looks like it starts from the inside. Let's hit E to extrude and pull up to there. All right, now I'm not doing this in wireframe right now. Uh, let's deselect and go back into object mode and see what we got. Okay, so it's like fitting into that hole. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to close this piece off. Let's go back into edit mode. We can go into wireframe as well. Shift alt and click that top edge. All right. By the way, I said earlier not to worry about these curves. All right. You'll notice that the subdivision surface on this cap part here has created a curve as it stretches. It's not the exact same shape of a curve, but hey, you know, we're just making a, a soap bottle. We don't have to follow the diagram explicitly. Well, what are we doing now? This piece, 3A, has to come through. There's going to be a tube. So we're going to create another hole in this one. So I'm going to switch over to vertex and I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale. We're going to pull in until the vertices sort of line up with this edge and this edge. So E, S. Watch the yellow dots. Now the diagram's not centered perfectly, but our model is. So we're just going to use the diagram as a reference. All right. And there is our hole. Let's go back into solid view and you can see it. All right. And like I did before, I'm going to, I'm going to select that edge and I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to pull down a little bit and we're going to probably have to add some edge loops. All right. I'm not going to have to close the bottom of it um, right here because it's embedded in Alt H brings back, by the way, H will hide, Alt H will bring back. Um, it's embedded inside this one, so we'll never see it. Let's go ahead, though, and add that subdivision surface, and you'll see what happens. It starts to look like a, and hit smoothing, like a donut or something like that. We need edge loops now to support it, all right? Um, you see, this is a straight line, and a straight line, when you put the subdivision surface, it sort of does an average, and it pulls it over to smooth it out. That's not what we want. So let's bring an edge loop, control R, click, drag up near the top, and uh, we're actually going to need near the bottom, so let's hide this. And we are going to actually bring one down near the bottom as well. And we're going to need to do some more, just like before when we had this as our middle line and we brought one in here. We're going to bring one in here, close, similar distance, like that. But that's not going to be enough, I don't think. I mean, that looks nice, but I think we need to sharpen it up just a little bit more. We need a little bit more support, so I'm going to go Control R and I'm going to bring one more edge loop up there. And that should tighten it up enough that it looks nice. All right, but we need to do something on the inside here as well. Uh, you see the way it curves under, it's nice and smooth, but we want it a bit sharper, so I'm going to bring an edge loop like that. All right. And sometimes people will put edge loops on, on here as well. They'll go Control R, bring it up. You'll notice that I'm often um, doing an edge loop on either side of my main line. So there's my main line here that, that determines sort of the where the hole is. I've got an edge loop there I brought in and there. And that may not be close enough. I might need to bring it closer, in which case I could grab that and just go S. Not too much. S and bring it in. Hold shift if you want to go slower. And let's see. See how nice and sharp that is? And that's where the tube would fit through. Now that might be too sharp. I'm not sure I like it. In which case, I might want to go S and pull this back a little bit. Because I want a bit more softness here. All right. Alt H to bring everything back. And here's what we have so far. Now, I'm starting to think that we see through right here. So what we can do is we can take this and we can just scale it to make it a little bit bigger. But maybe we want to scale it outwards to touch the sides, in which case you might say, did you even need a hole there at all? You know, no one's ever going to see it. All right, but I'm going to scale it outwards along the sides, but I don't want to think I want to change the height of this thing. I'm not going to just hit S. If I hit S, I go like this. It makes it wider, but taller. Let's not make it any taller. In other words, let's not scale it in the Z or Z direction. 
All right, so I'm going to hit S and then I'm going to press Shift Z. That means uh, scale, but Shift Z means not in the Z. Okay, and I just want I just want to get rid of this gap. S Shift Z pull, and if you have to, you can hold Shift just till it sort of touches and it's gone. And I didn't change the height; I just changed the width. And yeah, did I really even need the hole? Well, whatever, <laughs> it's there. Uh, this stuff won't be clear, so you won't see through it. Cool, let's move on. Now we're gonna do um, three, and we're gonna get the stuff on the inside as well. So we're gonna make a tube, and it's gonna come down. Now, if I was doing this on my own, I would probably build 3A first out of part of this. I would take an edge and do that, but we don't have to. Our 3D cursor is there. Let's just bring in another cylinder. Let's use the same parameters. Let's bring it up. Okay, we're going to go into edit mode and wireframe. And here's another trick. If you're having trouble seeing what's behind your background image, hit N, come to your background image down here. See background images? And here it says back and front. Back is labeled. That means the background image is in behind the modeling. Try front and see maybe you can work better. The background image is now in front of the modeling. Does that help you in any way? I don't know. Let's try it. Let's hit N to close that. Okay, I've, I'm just selecting the whole cylinder. S is still open at the top. I'm going to hit S to scale and I want to make it this width, roughly. Let's box select this area and pull it up. And before we go any further, let's go into solid and this is what it looks like. But as soon as you move away, you can now see your object. Now, I have a hole here. All right, that this would fit into. If I, I'm just going to show you something. My scale, say I can make it smaller than that. Um, again, whether or not the hole was necessary, it's up to you to decide that. But uh, let's uh, let's go into edit mode. Now it's a bit weird. I guess we were in edit mode um, and wireframe. There we go. Uh, when you're working with the image in front, it looks different. Box select that so we get all of those. Uh, we do that in wireframe mode and pull it down to here, all right? Now again, it may or may not be exactly the same width as the diagram, but just don't worry, you're making a tube. All right, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna hit E to extrude, S, we're gonna scale out, E, S, I'm gonna pull out like this, okay, till we like the width, E, pull down to here. 3A is connected to 3B, which is connected to 3C and 3D, so we're just going to repeat that. E to extrude, scale inwards now, until you like the diameter. E to extrude, and pull down. One more small one for 3D. E, S, maybe there. E, pull down. Let's leave it there. Let's deselect, go into solid view, and object mode. Let's move that background image to the back again so we can see. And to close that, see our modeling. There's our tube. Now, we're going to be adding a subdivision surface to this and it will require a lot of edge loops. All right, if I just have it selected and I go add modifier subdivision surface to it will start getting all smooth and start looking like, I don't know, intestines or something like that. We need to add edge loops to sharpen this up. So let's go into edit mode and um, yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> well, let's put an edge loop up near this edge and this one. Control R, I'm gonna pull one up here. And control R, I'm gonna pull one down there. Okay, let's actually hide this stuff. H and this stuff, H, all right. This tube here, all right, you see all this white stuff? It's stretching too much. Control R, put an edge loop, bring it down near the bottom. You don't have to slam it right to the very bottom, but we'll bring it close. We're gonna do this and then it disappears and it's not enough support. So let's do another one here. Control R, click there and pull it in. And between the two of them, see the way I've got an edge loop on one side? See, there's a line here. 
can't see it with subdivision. An edge loop on one side and on the other. And you might decide to take this, shift, alt, and click, and pull it down more so they're roughly equal. Let's put that on. That's much better. It may not be quite enough though. This is a long tube. So what I would do is I would put one more in behind, call for reinforcements. And that part's looking okay. This part is still a little bit too rounded. So the way we handle that, we already brought in an edge loop. We brought it up to there. Well, on this side, we're gonna bring one again. So once again, middle line, one below and one above. Was that enough to do? That's enough to do what we want. That's a nice curve. Well, this one is looking a little bit odd, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna bring an edge loop there, crush out some of this white stuff. We don't have to go all the way. We got one below an edge. There's an edge right here. There it is. Okay, so let's bring one in here. Similar distance, if possible. It's not an absolute rule. Let's put on subdivision surface. If that doesn't look sharp enough to you, you can call for reinforcements. Now, where would you put them? I would probably put them on this one here, right in behind, all right? I think we could use another one here as well. Let's check that out, okay? Okay, we gotta do something about this stuff here. Let's bring an edge loop down here and let's bring one up here, close, all right? All right, so we got one on top of this line. Perhaps we need one on the bottom of that line, similar distance. All right, I'll take off subdivision surface. We have this line here. We brought this one in. Maybe I'll bring it up a little higher. Maybe we need one on this side of it. One on each side, maybe more than one. Let's put the subdivision surface on again. I think that looks pretty good. We'll deal with the bottom in a bit. Let's come up to near the top. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's save our work and Alt-H to bring everything back, but we can't see through it. Here's a cool trick for you, by the way. If you don't wanna completely remove the bottle, select the bottle, come over to this box here and come down to where it says display and under maximum there, choose instead of texture, just choose wire. And you can, you know, it's still there, it's selectable. You can still hide the thing, H to hide, Alt-H, but it will show um, a wire. All right, and you can see through it like that. So that's looking just fine. All right, now <clears throat> let's look from three and we can see what we have. We have to do that tube there. All right, let's make a tube. However, unlike the diagram, the tubes in these soap bottles often aren't straight down. They kind of curve a little bit, whatever. They're made of flexible plastic or whatever. So I think we should do something like that because that'll bring in another element. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a curve to make this, all right? And I want to bring in my curve. Well, my 3D cursor is right there, so we should be okay. So let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to go Shift A, and I'm going to choose Curve Path. Now you might find it hard to see it. Let's rotate around and you'll see that it's actually this white line, it's laying this way, but I want it to be vertical. So I'm gonna rotate it around the Y axis 90, RY 90, just like that. I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit and look from three. Let's go into edit mode with that curve selected and now you can see better that it's got some points on it. Let's make sure it's selected and I'm gonna pull it down until uh, the first point is sort of inside this tube, all right? Now, what we do is we are going to be, in fact, I can show you this right now. Let's go back into object mode. Um, I'm gonna hide the bottle for the moment so you can see this a little bit better. In fact, I'm gonna hide the background image. You can just click on the E to hide it. Uh, and, and now you can see there's a, there's a line here when I select it, white line, all right? Now, I'm gonna come over to the panel here and I'm gonna scroll around. I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll around. And this thing here is for the curve. So I'm gonna click on that and under here, under 3D, make sure it says 3D, the fill, I'm gonna choose this to full or change it to full. And under bevel, I'm gonna start just pulling it up like this until it's a reasonably close diameter to this opening. And then it looks like a square. I'm gonna increase the resolution to maybe three. All right, and now I can 
bring that up a little bit more. I'm going to do something with this end so this is not set in stone. This is what the effect does. In fact, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Okay. Um, and if I go into edit mode, it's actually a curve. But watch what we can do. If I go to the side, I'm going to be box select these bottom points or I can just select them. Shift and select and pull them down like this. And watch what happens if I pull this out. You see the way it bends and curves like that? All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. But let's bring back our bottle, all right, so we can see, and let's go back into edit mode. All right, so we can see the bottom of the bottle. Let's box select these points and pull them down to near the bottom. And then let's, uh, let's try, eh, let's maybe just pull out the bottom one. Just like that a little bit. We can pull this a little if we want. And you can just manipulate a bit. We just want a small curve like that. That's all we want to do. Okay. Now, let's hide the bottle again and let me consider. I don't think I want it to be this wide. And so I'm going to reduce the bevel. I want it to be sort of a narrowish tube like that. Okay. Um, which means I'm going to close this off a bit, but what to do about this? It doesn't look that, that good and it's very, you know, paper thin. It's one poly. So what we'll do is we're going to convert this uh, into a mesh. So I'm going to go Alt-C, Mesh. And now if we go into edit mode, you see all of this stuff, okay? Um, that's probably smooth enough. One thing we can do to make it look a bit more realistic is uh, we can try to um, close this off a little bit, give it some thickness. And the way I'd like to do that is just by looking at it, let's go to the modifiers and choose solidify and change this value from 0 0.01 to say 0. Point, let's try 0 0.1. Now it's a little hard to determine what's going on here. Let's try uh, we have smoothing on? Yeah, we had There, without it on, you can see the thickness. And that might be a bit too thick. Let's try 0 0.08 or 7 even. 0 0.07. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And then I think I'm going to add a subdivision surface of 1. Just like that. And we'll get that effect. Now, I need to touch up the end of this. So let's go into edit mode. And let's add an edge loop. Um, this bottom part here, I want it to be, you know, like a tube that'll be sort of flat. I don't want it this rounded, you know, like elephant trunk. So I'm going to put an edge loop here, Control R, and slide it up there, and one down here. And I'm sort of flattening, look at what I've done. I'm flattening out this bottom edge. And to make it look even a little bit better than that, I'm going to do one more edge loop here, and I'm going to pull it towards the end. I don't think I'm going to need more than that for this, but now it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, go back to three. All right, cool. Now we need to do something about this and close it up. So let's just select that, go into edit mode, and let's do what we did before. Let's hit E and S, and we can pull it all the way in until it touches. When we do that, though, this part starts to curve. And so we'll bring in another edge loop and say, okay, and I'm gonna bring another one in for support, like that. And I might even bring one over here. And as I look at this, I realize, well, it's not quite touching. So let's just hit S and just drag it right in. Is that okay, like that? You know, do we need a gap? No one's gonna see it anyhow. All right, it's gonna be like that. Okay, let's hit three and Alt H to bring everything back. Let's make sure we've saved our work. So we now have that tube. We cannot now, you know, go to the curves and try to make it narrower, but it's not hard to make. If you think, you know what, that was too thick. I don't like it or I don't like the curve or whatever. You could just do it again. All right, so, but that's, that's where we're at so far. All right, I'm going to uh, go to the box here and I'm gonna switch this back to textured and I will see that. All right, well, we're moving on. Let's bring our background image back. We closed it by clicking the eye. Let's click the eye again and to close that. And you can see we've done that. Now we have 
just a couple more parts to do. So we can choose our, um, an edge on this to build number four, um, or we can just bring in another cylinder, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Shift A, mesh, cylinder. I know it's not seen, it's right in the middle. That's great, let's bring it up to about there. Go into edit mode and wireframe and scale it to about the right width. Now this piece, um, this piece, let me think for a second here. Um, yeah, this piece fits over this piece. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. I'm gonna bring it down. So it would go there, but I'm gonna put it just a little bit over this piece. So this would be the pump you'd press down. So it will press down over 3A there. So that's fine. Let's box select this and bring it up. And um, let's just have a look at this and see. Okay, so it's, it's not in, closed in on it. Yeah, we could close that in. Uh, I could just, just shift alt and click that and I could hit E and S and just pull it in till it makes contact. That's going to be fine. We'll put a uh, subdivision surface so we'll have to work on this. All right, let's go back to three and we are going to work on this part. We're going to build it all together in wireframe. 4A will lead to 4B and then I'll show you how to do the, the rest. So let's shift alt and click there. We're going to hit E and S. I'm going to scale out to about there. E and come up right up to the top there just like that all right let's have a look at that okay cool and then we're going to have uh, the top and some other stuff to do so let's do that what I want to have is I want to have a nozzle like structure sticking off that the soap will come out and just a little piece uh, in behind and a couple other things to do. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close off the top, shift alt and click there. I can do this uh, just in solid view, just looking at it and I'm going to hit E and S. I'm going to come in just a little bit, E and S, I'm going to come in a bit more and then I'm going to go E and S and I think I am going to come in E and alt M. So I did a bunch of steps there. Um, I want to do something with this middle part you'll see in a moment. So I did E and S, I came into there, E and S to about there, and then there, and, and that's what I've done there, okay? So, um, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create the nozzle, and uh, the way I'm gonna create the nozzle is I'm gonna extrude off the side of, or uh, of actually the front of the, of the cylinder, but I wanna do it within, you know, from here to here, and so I need an edge loop to determine where. So I'm gonna click an edge loop, and I'm gonna put it about there, and I'm gonna bring in an edge loop, and I'm gonna slide it up to about there. So this area here, between here and here, is where I'm gonna extrude out to make my nozzle. And I'm going to also um, be extruding, I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit. I'm gonna be extruding the back out from there as well, but we'll deal with that later. So here's what I want to suggest we do. Let's go into front view, and our image, has, background image has disappeared, that's fine. You see this dot right here? This is the center. And so I want to do something along the center. I'm gonna switch over to face selection and I'm gonna select this face and shift, uh, hold shift and select that face. The very, this, this inner uh, line is the middle. So this polygon and this polygon are, are central, but that's not wide enough to make my nozzle and there's no image to guide me. So I'm just gonna keep going this one and this one, I'm holding shift this one and this one and then i'm going to turn and look and say is that big enough to make my nozzle or one is front view do i want to go one more this one and this one and then my nozzle will be that thick i'm going to pull it out i'm going to try that all right so um i'm going to hit three again and you know it looks really weird because you have selected polys that aren't you know, that are seems to be off the diagram, but this is just the way it goes. I'm gonna hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull it out to here, like that. I'm gonna switch over to wireframe so I can see it, and I'm gonna SZ, scale in the Y, and pull it like that. All right, let's 
go into solid view and object mode and just have a look at that. Now, I think we are going to also want to scale this in the X so that it comes out and it narrows that way. It narrows from top to bottom, but it doesn't narrow in the X direction. So let's go back into edit mode and the ends are selected. All right. And if they weren't selected, you can just reselect them. I am going to go S X and scale it in like this as much as you want, because we're not following the diagram. Now, this part is rounded like a dinosaur snout. And the way I'm going to suggest we continue is to make this straight. That will help us. Um, if you view the axes, it's like we have the X here and we have the Y. I want all of these points at the same Y position. So I'm going to go S, Y, 0. S, Y, 0. And that will straighten them out. And I might even want to scale more in the Z, but then I'll be off the diagram, so I won't do that. Okay, cool, so far so good. Now, we're gonna be putting subdivision surface on this soon, but not yet. We need to make a hole. And this part can be a little tricky. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We, in order to make a hole, we need to have a square, a good square. It's possible we could use all these polys. Let's try. I want to select all of these polys right here. I'm going to hit C for paint select and I'm going to left click and drag my mouse over. And if I get extras, shift and paint over. Escape to drop that. They're all selected. Let's try doing it this way. It may or may not work. Hit I to inset and pull in I'm not sure I want to do it that way. I changed my mind. Let's not do it that way. Let's hit C. Let's reselect them. Let's hit E and S. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. Hit W, loop tools, and circle. And S to scale. E to extrude. Pull it in a little bit. E to extrude, pull it in a whole bunch. Let's just leave it there for now. Now we made a circle, but the problem is gonna be when I add a subdivision surface, this may not have been a good way to do it. So let's find out. Okay, select that wrench icon, subdivision surface two. We need to do some work that will make this look better. All right, so what we're going to do is go control R here and pull back towards the cylinder, but we don't need to touch the cylinder. We're going to do one towards the front as well, like this. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to do one here, so pull up like that, and one here, and pull down like that. Yeah, I don't think I like this way of doing it. Darn it. And I'm going to put one in here like that. Let's see how it's going so far. It's smoothing. That's a big hole. All right, I think I think we can we can deal with it though. Let's go into edit mode. And what I want to do is I want to I think I'm going to delete these faces right here cuz no 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 one's going to be looking in. Let's see if I got them all. There's another one there. This will help us. X faces. Delete those faces. And let's do another thing. Let's put an edge loop here. Control R and pull it back. And Control R and pull it forwards. And let's see how nice that's turning out for us. It's not bad. Okay, we can do a little bit more here. Let's drag an edge loop up under the neck of that thing down here, up to there. Let's do our usual trick. We brought one down here with respect to this line. Let's bring another one here. We brought one up. Let's bring another one here. And down here. One there, but I think we're gonna need one on the other side. Actually, let's bring that down a little bit more on this side like that.
big, big hole. Now there's one way you could do it. It does work. I'm just wondering if I can uh, clear this up anymore. So I brought an edge. Did I bring one down this way? Yeah, I did bring one down that way. Um, what about in there? Yeah, I brought one in there, didn't I? Did I do that? And outwards, that might help. One more on the outside. Yeah, it's not the smoothest, but it's not going to be bad. Okay, let's do the back region. Look for number three. We want this, so I'm going to go into edit mode. Um, and I'm going to be extruding. Um, I'm going to bring in an edge loop here and bring it to around the bottom. And I'm going to need this edge loop and this one, and not this one right here. I'm gonna ignore that. So I'm gonna look at the back, which is not one, that's the front, control one. All right, you can see the Z axis, this is the middle line. So what we wanna do is in face selection, we want to select some of these middle polys. Maybe not, oh, I held shift, not as wide as, as the front. Um, it doesn't have to be at the same level either. I was going to include these ones. Here, let's, I'll show you. Okay, on the same level as this one. But it doesn't have to be, but I will though. Um, and I think if I come down to, to these ones, it'll be the same height, but I don't think I want that. I think uh, I should be looking at the diagram. Yeah, I don't want those. C, hold shift. Okay, just those. Yeah, that's what I want. All right, cool. Good, close enough. I'm gonna hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna come out, and I'm gonna pull it out to there, and it's gonna look really weird. All right, uh, let's leave that curve. Let's not flatten that out. Instead, let's bring in an edge loop, control R, bring it close to the cylinder, bring one close to the edge. That won't make it straight or anything. We'll do that. We're also gonna put an edge loop down here and up here. And hopefully that is all we need and that didn't change anything for us in a detrimental way. And we still have that, that's cool. That's good. I don't think I need one underneath. Well, I might want one underneath like that. Don't bring it right up too, too high. Just flatten that out a little bit, not too much pinching. All right, let's do one that thing with the top that I was talking about. What we're gonna do is select uh, in face selection, C, and select all that, and just paint over that. That's all we want. We're gonna extrude that up a little bit. All right, E, and pull up. Just like that, not too much. Now, that is just gonna make a very soft uh, raising. Let's sharpen it up with an edge loop right here. Control R, pull it in, that's all. No more edge loops. Just like that, nice and soft for your hand. Is that enough? Mm, now I'm wondering if that's raised enough. And so what we could do is we could go into face selection, paint select that again. Select that whole area, don't get anything else, and we can pull it up even higher. And we'll decide if that is, oh, I do like that. Oh, I might wanna just leave it like that. Okay, cool. All right, now there is one or two more things that I would like to do. Uh, I'm going to hit wireframe and see if I can zoom in. Uh, you're going to see these lines. These are like uh, design elements, but there also is a little bit of threading on this so that the cap can thread on. So let's just do uh, this, this one first right here, okay? I'll get out of wireframe for the moment. We're going to go into edit mode. Okay, I've got, got to go back into wireframe right here. And the way we do this is bring in an edge loop, control R, and slide it to around there. Control R right into the middle of both of these. Okay, and they can both be deselected, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna reselect them, Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click, both of them at the same time, and we're gonna bevel. Control B, pull back until the space matches the black area. Click, while that's still um, selected, we're gonna hit extrude and then uh, scale, but we're gonna use Alt S, watch this. E and accept, Alt S and pull away. 
and it'll come out. How much is up to you. Just come out a little bit, go back into object mode, and you will see that you've created these little uh, areas. And I'm not going to sharpen those up. I'm just gonna leave them like that. Okay, so there's one thing. Let's go back in and just deselect that. Okay, save. And I think for realism, I don't think threading is going to be visible on this one. In which case, my friends, we have created our soap bottle. I think the only complicated part was, was up here. I went a little bit quick. There's different ways of creating that hall. And uh, that's the way we did it. So that gives us our soap bottle. And uh, what I think we'll do is next time we'll come back and we'll start to, we'll texture this thing, um, basically adding, you know, simple materials. And then we'll work on uh, putting the decal on it as well. Okay, thanks for watching.